Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Wes Craven's New Nightmare, starring Robert England, Heather Legenkamp, Miko Hughes, David Newsom, John Saxon, Wes Craven, Tracy Middendorf, I don't know if I'm saying that right, please forgive me, and Sarah Risher, and directed by Wes Craven. Now, I did watch this once before in my life, but I fell asleep. That's how we'll see when we get into the movie. We start with the building of Freddy's glove like we did in the first film, but it was just Hollywood filming the scene, and Heather Ligenkamp is married to Chase with a kid named Dylan, and we walk around to the set, and we see a bad-looking CGI glove attacking everyone on set, and as it turns out, it was Heather's dream. It reminded me, what does this have to do with the other movies in the series? And the only explanation I can come up with is this is a documentary of how Wes Craven should have never left the series after one, well, I don't know about that, and writes a script that erases parts two through six. And that is, in my opinion, a bullshit explanation, because after the first one, only three was the good one after that. You can skip all the piles of shit, and that is a main problem for me. Including this thing. Heather gets phone calls from of the song One, Two, Freddy's Coming For You, sung by someone, and I'm not exactly sure who, and she acts pretty violently in front of her kid when a limousine driver drives up to her porch and gives her a call, and I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck am I watching this movie? It has absolutely nothing to do with A Nightmare on Elm Street, except that it's making another one with Wes Craven, and Heather goes on a talk show with the surprise guest of Robert England dressed up as Freddy Krueger. And I do like that scene. It makes me think of how awesome Freddy was in the 1980s. And when I got and when I get to Freddy vs. Jason as well about how fun and badass he is as the character. Heather meets the CEO of New Line Cinema, Robert Shea, who's a fun cameo of the CEO of a studio to make it a brief appearance in this movie. Dylan has nightmares from when he watched the original Nightmare on Elm Street on the TV. And on the same day, and Heather's nanny calms him down after she gets home and the acting is really bad it's almost like they're not really acting at this point i really don't think the filmmakers know what they're doing because if you're telling the actors not to act that's that gets you a shitty movie in trouble i think wes can do better than that despite he's not the greatest director other than the first elm street scream and red eye and other than those three films, I just named He's not that great of a director, like I said in The Hills of Eyes Part 2, because he's not... And despite he's called the master of horror, makes me super angry, because he's not talented in making a scary movie at all. Chase dies, and I feel no sympathy for Miss Legenkamp at all, as she doesn't pull off sadness, believably. The funeral scene was hilarious because she was dreaming of Freddy and acting up, and it just made me laugh as so goddamn hard. Heather takes Dylan to the park, and we see John Saxon, who played Miss Camp's father in the original Elm Street, as she dreams of Freddy after the episode of the funeral. And while Dylan climbs out the of the rocket ship, while she doesn't pay close fucking attention until he. He was about to commit suicide, and that was pretty fucking hilarious, because as you're talking to John Saxon, how the fuck do you not pay attention to your kid? I mean, Jesus Christ. If it were me, I would go back and forth between talking to John and watching your kid, and the way Heather handled it, it's just very a poor choice. After dropping Dylan off at the hospital, Heather visits Wes Craven himself about the script, in his new Elm Street movie, and I think it's a mistake to put Wes Craven's acting in the, his own movie. It's like David Cronenberg showing up in Jason X, despite he didn't direct that film, or Quentin Tarantino acting in his own writing and directing by Tarantino films. It just feels like a mistake in general. It should have been cut as, this, as long as this movie is. It's at an hour and 52 minutes. And they need to cut at least 22 minutes of the movie out, because... I am bored and don't care anymore at this point as the movie shouldn't have existed this way. And I was checked out of the movie at this point by now when Heather visits Dylan in the hospital and bumps into the nanny 
And I was really done as this isn't a goddamn movie at all. The nurses in the hospital are, in this movie really got on my nerves to the point. I can't take this movie anymore. When will it end? Dylan sleepwalks out of the hospital and Heather calls John and finds Dylan crossing the freeway. And what a horrible setup for a climax. Freddy makes Dylan fly and Heather runs to the house and John and Dylan... <coughs> As Freddy makes Dylan's bed float as a boogeyman, coming to the real world, which is cheesy this time around, Freddy captures Dylan and takes him to his dream world of, and drags Heather along with them, and she sees the script to see how she could defeat Freddy one last time and keep Dylan alive. After they wake up, everything goes back to normal as Wes Craven writes a personal note to Heather on the script. And this climax pissed me off because it's a movie ripoff that will never happen as far as I'm concerned. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 1.3 out of 10. So far the worst of the Elm Street franchise. If you're a fan of the series, I recommend you stay the, as far the fuck away from it. Because this isn't a goddamn movie at all. These actors and director and others in this movie are phoning it in. And they're not even trying anymore. And this, and it gave me the finger as it pisses me off because this motherfucking movie exists. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And I will be back next week, or next time, excuse me, with Freddy vs. Jason with a mixture of A Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy the 13th series. And until next time.